Hi, everybody, and welcome to Internet Roundup, brought to you by... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's free. Oh, I thought we had that sponsorship locked in. No. No. Sorry I didn't come up with anything. Should All right. we try again? Internet Roundup, brought to you by Josh and Chuck of Stuff You Should Know. Oh, I thought of a sponsor. I was going to... Internet Roundup, brought to you by... Chicken of the Sea. <laughs> All righty. This is what we do each week. We goof off and share things that we cut find up. on the internet. We just cut up. <laughs> this is our one outlet to be goofy. It is. The rest of the time we're just like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I found a cool story here. The headline is, Study Shows Chimps Can Learn to Cook. Yeah, a little bit. They learn that cooking is something that is worthwhile. Yeah, here's what they did. They found, and of course, the, uh, what is it, the bonobo chimp, who they always use because apparently they're, like, they might as well be humans. Yeah, they can deal cards. Yeah. <laughs> they can hold up banks. Uh-huh. Smart chimps. Very smart chimps. Well, um, smart smart apes, we should say. They're great apes. They're not chimps. That's right. But they're called bonobo chimps, right? No? I think the bonobos are their own thing. Oh, okay. So, Alexandra Rosati... He's uh, or she is an evolutionary biologist at Yale and Felix uh, Warnikin, a psychologist at Harvard, did mm-hmm. this experiment where they had basically sort of a little fake oven um, that had a, a hidden cooked baked potato. Right. And they would give the apes the raw baked potato, show them that if you put it in there and shake it, you can take out the cooked one. And so they eventually made this connection. Hey, these cooked sweet potatoes taste better. All right. So I'm going to put it in this little microwave. Shake it. Shake it up and enjoy my sweet potato that's all nice and steamy. Right. And the uh, the, the researchers really stress, like, again, they're not cooking. Right. But what they're learning is that delaying gratification mm-hmm. can lead to something better through the idea of cooking, right? Yeah. So, like, they found that some of these apes would, would take their sweet potatoes, their raw sweet potatoes that were given, and hang on to them. Until they saw that oven. Until Yeah, until yeah. they could get access to the oven and then cook them. It's pretty great. It really is. And they also, I think, said, well, let's switch it up here. Um, maybe they're just conditioned with this potato. And they gave them carrots, and they did the same thing. They were like, hey, I bet these things would taste pretty good if you cook them up. Yeah. <laughs> so they held on to the carrots as well. Until they could, I think what it proves is that they want to cook. Everybody wants to cook. They want to know how to make that thing soft and steamy and delicious. Right. And uh, they're just, uh, you know, shaking that thing. Yeah. Why can't they just teach it to push the button? It's pretty easy too. Microwaves are super easy. Yeah. Pretty, I thought it was neat. Fun. You got this from Mental Floss, this article. Mental Floss, and one I, of my I favorite like basically sites. how it they tied it up at the end, basically saying like, yeah, you know how we think we're like so much greater than everything else on earth. Yet another thing that's taken down a peg. Sure. Cooking. Yeah. We're not that big of a divide. Nope. Um, so the next one we've got is- uh, This is so cool. It is very cool. In the UK, there's going to be a conference to present the findings of Christina Lee, who's a professor in Viking studies at the University of Nottingham. That's a real place. Yeah. Robin uh, Hood went there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Christina Lee, Dr. Lee- um, translated something called Bald's Leech Book, which is a Viking medical text <laughs> written in the Old English. Yeah, I bet which this is, is pretty awesome. Virtually illegible, unless you're somebody like Christina Lee, who's a professor in Viking studies, like I said. And um, It's one of the earliest medical textbooks anywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things that she came up with was a she translated a recipe for um, an eye infection. Mm-hmm. It uses two different kinds of onions and garlics, in equal quantities, you pound them together, you take an equal amount of wine and bullock's gall, which also means cow bile, mm-hmm. mash it all together, leave it in, I think, a copper pot for nine days, a brass vessel, I'm sorry, Yeah. and then you wring it out through a cloth and slap it on your infected eye. Pretty neat in and of itself, right? Right. That's worth, it's worthy of mention on the internet for sure. Sure. But- what makes it worthy of mention on popular science is that somebody decided to try to see if it kills other things, and they found that it indeed does. That's right. It actually works on MRSA, uh, <laughs> MRSA, the MRSA bacteria. Yeah. They said that uh, in synthetic wounds as well as in rats, um, the individual ingredients didn't do anything, but when you mix it together in that cauldron, yeah. it actually killed only uh, one in 1,000 bacteria survived. Yeah, it wiped out MRSA. And again, MRSA is a superbug mm-hmm. that is resistant. It's a type of staph, 
which is bad enough, yeah. but it's resistant to antibiotics, which means there's a huge, huge threat looming on the horizon. It already is in a lot of places, but as far as um, just wiping out humanity, MRSA's got a real, real, it's a contender. Yeah. And now we we can turn to a thousand year old poultice and say, no, 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 MRSA. That's pretty awesome. We got you licked. It makes you um, wonder if there are any other ancient um, remedies that are like super valid these days. Well, that's exactly what it's making people wonder and is proving like we should go back and look at a lot of these things that, you know, made it, have been written down a thousand years ago. Yeah. But they it may have been used for a thousand years up to that point. Dude, what if the cure for cancer is a thousand years old It'd be pretty and lost? Hopefully we can find it again. That's a movie right there, buddy. Yeah. It's called The Medicine Man starring Sean Connery. <laughs> Oh, was that what that was about? I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. I didn't see it, but he was looking for cancer and like the cancer cures in the jungle. Right. A lot of people are worried that we've already <laughs> gotten gotten rid of it. You all right? I just thought I was really onto something there. I see, didn't know Sean Connery ruined it. That's what he was talking about. That's how wound up we usually are <laughs> the rest of the day. Was that this episode? Bald's <laughs> Leech Book. Yeah. I'm going to get a copy of that. <laughs> you're not going to make heads or tails of it. You know, it's funny. Our, our buddy... Uh, John Hodgman, the great John Hodgman, yes. of the Daily Show with right. John Stewart. Yeah, um, and Judge John Hodgman, the podcast. Yeah, he is a big fan of um, these old cookbooks, mm -hmm. uh, like old Southern cookbooks. They're really, really funny. Like you know, he'll post a, a recipe on for like squirrel pie, and all <laughs> these different things. That are they're really funny if you read these recipes. It's like you know, you know, mash the squirrel's head until soft, like stuff like that. <laughs> Lay on it until it stops breathing. <laughs> Pretty much. So I definitely uh, see the appeal here. I bet he'd be a big fan of the Leech book. Cool. Well, we'll send him a copy for his birthday, which just happened. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, well, yeah. You want to wrap it up? It Consider it wrapped. We will see you next week on Internet Roundup, brought to you by Chicken of the Sea. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>